Hi, in this video, let's take a look at this MIGSIG DP10013 high voltage differential probe for oscilloscopes. Now, there have been quite a few reviews on this very probe on other YouTube channels, and the reviews were all very positive. So I requested this probe from Banggood, and we can take a closer look on this channel as well. This is a 100 MHz differential probe with a attenuation choice between 50 times and 500 times, which is quite common for high voltage differential probes. The probe comes in at roughly $180, which is quite a bargain as far as differential probes are concerned. A Tektronix P5205A, which has comparable specs, will easily set you back $2,000. Anyway, I will leave a product link in the video description below as usual for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. So why do we need a differential probe? Well, the first obvious reason is that the majority of oscilloscopes, except for perhaps the portable ones, are mains earth referenced. So the circuit ground and the chassis is physically connected to the ground pin on your three prong power cord. This means that when you connect your typical probe to an oscilloscope, the ground clip is actually connected to the mains earth. Now imagine you accidentally connected the ground clip to the live wire. That would essentially cause a dead short, and it would definitely create some hazardous conditions. And most likely such energetic event would cause damages to your probe at the very least, and possibly would destroy the ground traces on the PCB inside the oscilloscope. And that would be very costly to repair, if it is possible at all. A differential probe in this case can help, as it converts a differential signal into a single-ended signal, and thus isolate the circuit grounds between the measurement and your instrument. That's only part of the reason for using a differential probe, though. Another important reason is for the high common mode rejection ratio that is inherent to the nature of the differential probes. One technique people use to measure mains reference circuit is to utilize two of the oscilloscope channels and use mathematical functions built in to subtract one channel's measurement from the other to obtain the final readings. Now, this may be all you need if you just need to get a rough sense of the voltage waveform of a very low frequency mains earth referenced signal. But the common mode rejection ratio is likely to be very poor, especially when the frequency increases. And for this reason, any precision measurements must be done with a differential probe, where both the signal paths are closely matched to ensure the maximum CMRR. If you take a look at the spec for the MIGSIG DP10013, you will see that the CMRR is specified at greater than 80 decibels at DC level and at greater than 60 decibels at 100 kHz, and it further reduces to 50 decibels at 1 MHz. Interestingly enough though, it did not specify the CMRR beyond 1 MHz, even though this probe has a bandwidth of 100 MHz. But if you take a look at a Tektronix P5205A, you will see that the CMRR reduces significantly at the higher end of the bandwidth for the Tektronix probe that is at just around 30 decibels. The probe comes in with a very nice case along with some really high quality accessories. For instance, I really like these grabbers as you can see there is enough tension so that you can be sure that it will connect to the wires securely. And also the long tip is very flexible here. You also get a pair of these very large allocator clips and also a pair of these DMM style probes. Now, as you probably noticed, the differential probe actually does not have a BNC input, rather it just has these two rather long wires here. So this probe is probably best suited for measuring frequencies lower than 10 MHz due to the straight capacitance these wires introduce. We will take a look at that shortly as well. Okay, with theories out of the way, let's uh, take a look at how well this probe works. Right now, what we're looking at is using the differential probe to measure the output from a non-isolated variac. 
As you can see here, the probe is powered from the USB output from the oscilloscope, and of course it can be powered by any independent USB power source as well. And we do have a, by the look of it, a feed-through USB output here, so you don't have to occupy the port if you're using that for power. The differential probe here is set to 500x, and unfortunately the oscilloscope doesn't have a 500x probe attenuation setting, and I had to set it to 1000. So you can see that actually the reading doesn't quite agree with what we have on the measured by the DMM. And in fact, it is actually twice the voltage of what we see here. And now let me start adjusting the output from the variac so you can take a look at the voltage changes along with the waveform here. So if I dial it down, you can see that the measured voltage is roughly twice as what we see here, which is because I mentioned earlier that attenuation is set to 1000 instead of 500. And if I maximize this, you will see that no problem at all. Also, you can see that the waveform is ever so slightly distorted. Now, that's actually not a problem of this differential probe. It is fairly common to see this kind of a distortion in mains power. This differential probe also has a feature where you can see that this light right now is green, it's indicating we're in this uh, times 500 setting. And if I lower the voltage, I'll show you that uh, we can change it to times 50. And what happens is if the voltage is above the range, it will start to flash, indicating that you need to dial down the voltage. Otherwise, the probe might be damaged. So let's see if we can trigger that condition here. Yeah, you can see that it started uh, flashing here. So just to pay attention, when it started flashing, you need to either disconnect the measurement or you need to change the voltage down or swap to 500 so that uh, it can prevent the probe getting accidentally damaged. For the next experiment, I'm outputting a square wave from the UTG962E function generator. And uh, you can see that the output actually goes into two channels. The first channel is actually going through this differential probe. The second channel goes directly into channel two. So the yellow trace is the output from the differential probe, whereas the green trace is from channel two. Right now, the frequency is set at one megahertz. And uh, let's uh, zoom it in to see what we can see here. So if I start zooming in, you will notice that the rise time of that yellow signal, which is coming out from the differential probe, is ever so slightly slower than the original trace, which is the green one. And this is somewhat to be expected. The first thing is due to these long wires and also the rise time for the differential probe is specified at I think it's 3.5 nanoseconds, whereas the scope is less than two nanoseconds. And as we mentioned earlier, due to this long wiring, the straight capacitance is gonna be significant. So we're not expecting to measure frequency that high. I had originally wanted to do a teardown, but uh, after playing around, I couldn't seem to find a way to open this up, at least non-destructively. And there were two stickers here. I removed them. There's nothing behind this one. There were a few adjustment holes under this sticker, and those are probably to tweak the trim pods or your variable capacitors and whatnot. But uh, there doesn't seem to be a way to open it up without having to physically pry open the shell here. So I did not want to do that as I do want to keep this uh, differential probe and use it for future videos. So I guess I will have to cut this video short and uh, maybe in the future if I figure out how to open this up, I'm going to do a follow up on this differential probe. So I can definitely confirm other YouTubers have said this is definitely a very, very solid differential probe. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel either. I will catch up with you next time.